Far east of the Sword Coast, the Shadowvar and Discoverin have fallen. The Shadow Storm is no more. Sembia is fractured into city-states. A mysterious hero rises from the ashes to usher in a new era of prosperity. Yet there is still suffering. Cormir and the wild elves of the Dalelands offer war on all sides. Earthmotes, madness, and shadow dragons plague the lands. These are the tales of the heroes who ended that suffering. 1491 DR, the year of Sembian revival. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Long Winded One. Uh, with me tonight, I have two guests. Um, one of them is really close to home for me. It's it's my wife, uh, Abby, who plays Sonia on the show. And the other is the kind of uh, creator of Sonia, uh, my friend Marco, who has been on the podcast before, but in a different role. He played Faradir in the Inglorian Bastards podcast. Um, and uh, so you'll recognize his voice. Uh, but anyway, welcome, you guys. Hello. Hey, it's good to be here. Uh, and so this one, this one will be a quick interview. But um, as always, we like the listeners to get to know the the minds behind the characters. Uh, but the first question is for you, Marco. Um, I'd like you to tell me uh, what led you to doing a Shadow Var character, or, or, or like, what was the? I mean, if and if 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 that's too kind of open ended, um, maybe talk a little bit about your um, your inspiration behind you know, playing the Sonya type character? Well, I I don't remember exactly how you, you, you came out and said we were starting the Symbia campaign, but I think you had a few potential plot hooks as to why your character might be in the, uh, in that starting town that we had been in. And um, I was looking into Symbia and I realized that, you know, recently in the history before the time period of um, our campaign, that they had been um, subjugated by the Netherese Empire. Um, and, you know, that was the empire that had connections to the um, Shadowfell. And I thought it would be pretty interesting to have a character that had some of that, you know, shadow magic, especially in a place where it might not necessarily be so welcome. And uh, so I started thinking how, like, what sort of a character would have those powers here. And um, I decided to play a character who had maybe betrayed her own in some way. Um, You know, the details, we'll get into the details, but basically she spent the past six years in in hiding and um, suppressing her shadow magic. Um, And I, I just thought that was kind of like an interesting concept. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if the listeners can't tell, I've I've told both Marco and Abby to kind of not give uh, too much away. Obviously, there's um, Sonia has some secrets, um, you know, that are kind of slowly revealing themselves. Um, so uh, one of the things that's kind of off limits for them to talk about is this voice that she keeps hearing. Um, and so we're going to kind of stay away from that tonight. Obviously, that's the big like elephant in the room that everybody probably wants to hear about. But I'll switch to uh, I'll switch to Abby now. Um, just a, a kind of a, a funny, quick question for my lovely wife, um, uh, and this is probably an easy answer. How did you get roped into voicing Sonia? We live in the same house, um, and it was I, I'm pretty sure this was part of our unspoken marital vows that when when you needed a female uh, character. Um, that your wife would be willing to play said female character, but it's, it's been really fun. I'm sure she had to audition just like everyone else though, right? Oh, of course. It was a very rigorous <laughs> uh, audition process. There's <laughs> countless other options. Oh yeah. Literally could not be counted because yeah. they weren't there. I didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, she barely made the cut, but you know, in, and after, you know, six episodes or six or seven episodes, I'm going to say, I think the decision was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's see here. Let's go uh, back to Marco and let's let's talk about the name. So, so I, you're gonna have to remind me. For some reason, I, I have in my head that Sonia was like a nickname. Yeah. So um, 
I didn't, so to be honest, I didn't put too much thought into the name. Um, but the thing uh, is that her original name was Katya. And when she went into hiding, she took on a to- totally new persona and has kind of left that name behind. Ah, I see. Right. So she goes by Sonia now. And it's not like she has her close friends call her by her old name. It's like that's her former life. She doesn't, uh, you know, go by that at all anymore. She's left that life behind. Ooh, more about those secrets. Um, yeah. So I, I have to tell you in writing this podcast, so this podcast is at least a year, maybe two after we did this, started the Symbia campaign. Um, and I, I definitely decided to simplify a lot of things. Um, you know, um, at one, I think um, the, the the people that were chasing Sonia originally were also Shadowvar. Um, and as you know from the podcast, the, the, the people chasing Sonia now are the Shatterkai. Um, and it doesn't seem like a big difference maybe uh, um, at first, but it definitely has, was a, was a major change. Um, obviously I didn't bring in this uh, secondary name, but it's, it's, it's something that, you know, maybe we just haven't talked about yet. Um, but absolutely. Um, there were some definite changes with the character, um, in the podcast. Can, um, I'm going to stick with Marco for this next question. Could you tell us, um, a little bit about, um, you know, like her, her personality or like how you played her and, and maybe, um, you can even mention like how it might differ or, or, you know, compare in some ways to what you've listened to in the podcast. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'll start out with like her her actual character concept, which was a, a, a sorcerer warlock combination. Um, I think Jared, at this point, you've played that combination as well too, and it can be pretty fun. Uh, but the magic that I chose for her was focused primarily around that shadowy magic. And some of her spells later on also involve things that could be kind of telepathic or telekinetic in nature, which uh, again, I won't get into right now. But uh, so I, I knew I wanted to play a spellcaster and but I didn't want it. I didn't want to play a character that was a total pushover. And so she's like pretty tough. Like she she's a really tough character, both, um, you know, mechanically, but also I think personality wise. She also one interesting thing about the character was that her her highest uh, stat was charisma, but she's also just very reserved and on the quieter side. She's not like a stage presence, if you will, in terms of charisma. I think the charisma is more of like her force of will, if you will. For, for those of you who listened carefully, um, Marco dropped a major Easter egg there. Um, and you might have to rewind and listen to that again, but absolutely. She is a strong character and hopefully that has come, come about in the, in the podcast. How, Marco, how do you think we, we did sort of representing that in the podcast so far, the strength? Oh, I think, I think Abby's done a great job. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to hear like your thoughts on the character as well. Um, so on my end, I, I don't know the story the way that you two do, um, because I was not part of that original campaign, obviously. So I'm kind of learning as the listener does, which is a little bit interesting. Um, so it's really interesting to hear some of the things that you say about the character and kind of, uh, gives me some inklings as to where she's going on my part. I've always thought she's, she's clearly, uh, kind of conflicted. She obviously has something to hide. She's running from something. Um, but she also seems to really care deeply about the people that she interacts with. I mean, even Harold, who she really only met in one episode, she clearly um, was spending a lot of time thinking about what happened to him after that. Was he okay? So I think that speaks to um, her values and and what you know, what she's thinking about and how much she cares about others. Um, But by the same token, you also mentioned her strength and you see several times that she is trying to protect the people that she's with. So, so she clearly um, is strong, knows that she's strong enough um, and is willing to, to really take the heat to help those that she's traveling with. Yeah. I mean, hopefully the listener has also taken this away. Um, You know, I didn't originally 
Um, you know, I, I, it was the strength that really stood out that Marco mentioned in, in her character to me. But um, what has happened in the writing of this podcast is this sense of compassion that she has that Abby mentioned, um, you know, coming to their rescue, uh, standing guard over them, um, you know, always taking the front line kind of just on instinct. Um, and um, yeah, obviously the, the worrying about Harold was a part of that as well. Um, so she's a very complex character, very strong. And, and in, in some ways, um, even though like it's Matoa that the plot is kind of like Matoa's like plight as a, as a Harper is bringing the plot forward a- as a listener. And as the writer of the show, it's, you know, we started the very first episode with Sonia and there was a reason for that. It's because in, in some ways, Sonia's, um, part of the story is kind of like the central part, you know, every character here is important, right? You know, you wonder about Siren and, 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 and what kind of character Siren is really on the inside. He's, he's kind of a comic relief character, but at the same time, like he, he obviously cl- clearly cares deeply about his, his friends. And it was, it was clear sort of the depth of his soul when he found out about Jarlil and, and it falling to the ground and, and sort of how he reacted to that. There's this, you know, this, um, how much, uh, Matoa cares about his friends and, and obviously his mission, uh, with the Harpers, uh, Jendal, obviously we, we, we cared, he cares deeply about Sonia. And there's been a couple times Jendal has, you know, um, gotten Sonia out of, uh, some, some hot spots, And, and so each of the characters is interesting, but, but in some ways it's, it's Sonia that we wonder about. Do you guys get the, the same feeling? Yeah. I like that. She's not impervious too. You know, it would be so easy to, to take that concept of strength too far and make her sort of this superhuman, um, unbeatable thing. And, and that's not the case, you know, she's, she's really overspent herself a couple of times. And I like that. I like that she has this strength, but she also has limits. Um, so she needs the people that she's with as well. And I think that's really human or shutter. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I was going to say the same thing. Like she wouldn't have gotten very far without, uh, her companions. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I remember the very first, um, we, we did some origin sessions. I think that that very first episode where she's hanging up in that, in that sort of small, you know, basement room in Jarlil, um, where she's being held prisoner. That was, I think that was our origin session, Marco with, yeah, with that was. and it was like, I remember it was a bloodbath. Do you remember like that a Tarantino movie? Yeah. It really was. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, I kind of glossed over a little bit of the first episode in, in terms of like recording. Um, I had written a bunch of parts that I ended up cutting out um, because I, you know, I was still new to sort of splicing all of this together. Some of the sound quality is not as good as like episode three and four and five and six. Um, and, um, and I was just kind of feel, like feeling out how this was going to work. And I think, I think some of the actors were also like, wouldn't you say Abby? Yeah. I mean, that's the first time I've done any audio recording. Yeah. So I think it took a few tries before I could sound appropriately emotive in the different moments. So I think you were somewhat limited by what your loving wife could bring to the table <laughs> in the first episode or two. Yeah. Some of, some of the dialogue was like, ooh, I got to cut that. <laughs> but, but you know, it was, it was, I blame the writer, which is me. Um, all right. Well, um, I, I have, I have really tried to keep these episodes a lot shorter. Um, obviously when we do, um, interviews with the experts, um, like this, this episode is going to, is going to air right after the episode with, um, Philip Athens. Um, and that like, we recorded like an hour and 15 minutes, which I cut down, I cut out the dead space and I got down to like 50 minutes. So obviously those interviews are going to be much longer, but we're going to keep these short and we're going to keep these so that you can listen to them on your commute. Um, but before we go, I, I want to surprise Marco with one last question and that's, um, you know, I'm, I'm put you on the spot here. Is there anything sort of coming up that you hope is written into the show, uh, and, and the podcast format, anything in, in Sonia's future? How do I do that without giving anything away? I think the upcoming, um, what, what's the name of the town that they're, that they're heading towards? Drelt. Drelt. Yes. In, in, I think it was in Drelt that we had an encounter with a very interesting halfling. 
Oh, Cecil. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that whole arc and what happens there is, uh, is interesting. So, yeah, well, that's a little, is, is this foreshadowing that, or, or what are we doing here? Uh, tell, um, this is definitely something to look forward to. Uh, Cecil was a, was a cool halfling um, and you will definitely meet him and his crew in, uh, in D and D sort of I, the old, it was either dungeon magazine or dragon magazine, one of the two uh, where it talked about drought as a, um, is a hunter's hamlet. That's all that's written about the drought. Um, and, and I turned that into, um, into sort of like a mercenary outpost in my mind. I, I felt like it was a, it was like an easy transition to go from a hunter's hamlet to a place where a bunch of mercenaries, you know, like sell swords hung out. That's how you define hunter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I um, like it. And so, yeah, so um, if they can get by this black figure um, who, who we still don't know who it is, um, obviously they will make it to Drelt. And 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 in Drelt, um, we know that um, Thera, the, um, who was originally a, a third of Kelimvor, um, but in, in realizing that Kelimvor is kind of a, a big softy, uh, I rewrote this uh, and, and Thera serves someone else. Um, and, and, and one of the helms, def- uh, I think, described her as the, an unarmed servant of a dead god, if that gives anything away. Ooh. We still don't know who she's serving. But if you know your D&D lore, um, a death stalker is probably something that's easy to find out who she's serving. Um, but anyway... I want to thank you both for being here. Uh, one of you had to kind of be here. Uh, <laughs> I live here. <laughs> yeah. But we, we thank you for coming back, Marco. And um, I don't know if we'll talk again, but um, I'll, I'll see you uh, in, in Faerun, I'm sure, coming up. That's right. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Though this marks the end of the episode, the tale continues within a 10-day. Join us at longwinded.one. And consider giving us a review on Apple Music, Spotify, or really whichever platform you choose.